Here is a project that we're going to be working on. Um, so the file name for this is going to be double quiz. And in this, uh, we're going to create a quiz. So this is going to be a quiz game uh, where every question has two correct answers. Uh, let's say out of five. So there's going to be five possible answers. Two of them will be correct. So uh, in order to do this, uh, we'll have a score variable and start it at zero, uh, which is a good number to do uh, before they get any correct. Uh, and there's going to be uh, to, to store the two uh, two answers. We're going to use uh, char variable answer one and answer two. Uh, and then, uh, so I'll just put a little introduction here. Uh, so this one will just say, welcome to double quiz. Um, and then we'll specify um, every question has exactly um, two answers. Okay, uh, and we'll create a little bit of extra space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to display the first question here. So uh, I'll do a C out. And your first question should be different from this, but um, which are Canadian provinces? Um, and I'll do an end L. Now I'll put the five answers. So let's see, we've got, we'll put, oh, I'm going to use periods for this. Um, you know, actually, if I backslash T these, then they'll be tabbed in and it'll look really nice. So let's go with North Dakota. And then um, answer B will be Manitoba. See out um, backslash T. Uh, answer C will be Saskatchewan. Oh, I just realized I. We're going one of these and L backslash T. Uh, let's see, D. I'll put a trick one here. Uh, Blurta. And uh, we'll put the Yukon. Yukon, which is a territory, not a not a province. Okay, so here we go. We've got our list of provinces, and then we want to prompt the user for which answer. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, spacing here again. See out answer one, and we'll see in a one. And then I'll copy paste for this, copy paste. So this is going to be answer two and we're going to read in a two. Okay. Now, uh, how to evaluate if they've got this correct or not. So, uh, in this situation, we're going to do if, um, now, 
we're going to use a compound if statement to verify that this is correct. The correct answers are, and you can uh, you can also do this uh, for your own project is just mark them to the side whether uh, which ones are correct and then you're not going to make a mistake uh, or less likely anyway. So uh, a one. So we we're going to check to see that their answer one was B. Uh, and their answer two was C. Um, so in this case, we're going to see out uh, correct. And then we're going to add one to the score. Now, uh, alternatively, uh, they could also have put them in the order of C and then B. So we have to put that case as well. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste this one. Else if, uh, let's do C and then B. In this situation, they are also correct. And then the one other situation is uh, I want to put what happens um, if they got only one of them correct. So else if. Now here, at this point, this is something we can use to our advantage. At this point, we know that they did not get both of them correct. So all we have to do, and we're, we're leveraging the fact that we already have these two as false statements, because otherwise this one's really uh, challenging to write uh, without eliminating that possibility. So we're going to check to see if A1 is B or uh, A1 is C. Or a two is B or a two is C. See, I couldn't put this as the first option uh, because it would run no matter what. Uh, so then I'm going to say C out uh, only one correct. Uh, and we're not going to adjust the score, uh, but we're just giving that information to them. Um, and then uh, I'm going to put an else condition here. See out both answers incorrect. Okay, so let's see what we've got. I'm going to run this. Okay, so we've got our question here, and then I have to put in answer one and two. So let's say I do uh, answer A and B. Oh, only one. Oh, you know what? I put the wrong letters here. Oh, no, no, that's right. Yeah, because uh, one of them is uh, Manitoba. I got, I got that right. One correct. I'm going to run it again. Good idea always to just test to make sure that everything is working properly. Okay, uh, so let's go A and D. Both answers incorrect. So it seems to be working just fine. Uh, now what I want to do is for, I'm going to make my second question. And you're going to do this for your project too. Uh, I'm going to take this in. Well, no, I guess I just want the, the question part here. Now, obviously, you're going to want all your questions to be different. But for your question two, 
you're going to be doing it this way instead. Uh, we'll be doing this as a nested if structure and we're going to be flip-flopping back and forth. So every odd number question is going to use compound if statements and every even numbered question is going to use nested ifs. So let's check to see if. If a1 is a b, then I'm going to have a series of options. Uh, else if a1 is c, I'm going to have a series of options. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do else if uh, a2 is b, and I'll show you why in just a second, else if a2 is c, and then the last one is going to be an else. So this is a little bit of a different structure from our other uh, other nested ifs, but um, but this will work very well. Um, you know what? Uh, for this, maybe to keep it more similar to our other structures, uh, I'm going to cut this, and then we'll we'll be pasting it in in the else here in just a minute. Okay, so do it this way. Uh, so if the first answer uh, is A, what I've got to do is I've got to check to see uh, if um, A2 is C, then uh, this is the same situation as correct, because they will have B and C here. There we go. Otherwise, else, it will say only one correct. Okay. Now, for this C option, uh, I'm going to check to C. Do a little copy paste. Uh, so if a2 is b now, that will be correct. Otherwise, only one is correct. Otherwise, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if a2 is b. Then I'm going to do something. Uh, else if a2 is C, I'm going to do something, and then I'll have my else condition here. Okay, so now if we get to this else thing, so we know that if we get to the else, A1 uh, does not equal B, and A1 does not equal C. So those would, we know that those are both false statements. So if we get here, and this is true, then we know that uh, A1 was neither of these. And uh, then what we can do is if we find that A2 is B, we can actually put the only one correct. And the same thing here. Uh, and then the else condition here is our one situation where we're going to have both answers incorrect. All right, so that is the same result. So we'll just verify this. So let's do A and then C, uh, only one correct, and oh, it's a little bit off the screen, what I'll put, 
A and then C again, only one correct. So it's going to do it in the exact same format. So when you're doing your own quiz, you're going to flip flop between these. Every odd numbered question is going to evaluate the answer this way. Every even numbered question is going to evaluate the answer this way. 